Welcome back, guys, to Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Gambit, where last episode, after investigating the rehearsal tape further to spot an image of the president in the darkness, we took testimony from Sean about what happened during that time as we revealed a possible accident and a purposeful cover-up, with the yellow mark on the body's chest being from Gavel's lilies, which Sean removed. However, instead of following this line, we decided to bring up the fact that there are other suspects, the secret mastermind or maybe Excelsius winner, leading to 12 years ago being brought up yet again as we learned of the SS5 case, having been given the case file by an arriving Francisca as we now investigate it with Little Thief. That is if we have it. I thought we didn't. Alright, Kay, if you could set Mr. Thief in motion... Sure, looks like there's more than enough here to work with. Where do you want to start with? Good question. Let's see. It seems there was an eyewitness. A freelance journalist by the name of Alf Uldown. Alf Uldown? Okay, Alf. <laughs> but apparently, he was killed by the culprit for witnessing the kidnapping. So this is where we he saw it all happen, huh? Here, as in the big building. No, construction of the big building only began a year ago. Before that, it had been a piece of abandoned property. And before that... Eh, now we're getting to the stuff I know. Twelve years ago, this place would have been... The Happy Family Home. Like, for retired people? No, it was a place for children without parents. An orphanage, in other words. The president was kidnapped from an orphanage. Yeah, and the place was run by Fifi Lagarde. She called it her happy little home. As the proprietor of this institution, I suppose it's understandable that she came under suspicion. President Wang, Excelsius winner and Warden Lagarde. Surely the SS5 incident must be related to our current case. Okay, could you enter the data relating to the murder of Mr. Aldown? It seems sensible to assume that he was killed by whoever kidnapped the president. So, if we solve the murder, we solve the kidnapping. Nice! Alright, we're counting on you. Okay, does have it. <laughs> what did you lend then? Oh, that's a lot. A lot of data. It's been bricked, he has. What, what the heck is this? When did I grow to become so blasé towards people's reactions to Mr. Thief? What we're seeing here is the front yard of the orphanage as it was 12 years ago. At least as far as the police reports describe it. Yeah, this is how it looked when they started investigating at 7am the morning after the murder. And it seems it had been snowing. Yeah, from what I heard, the footprints wound up being pretty important evidence. The snow fell in the daytime the previous day. In other words, before the incident occurred. Meaning that none of the relevant footprints would have been obscured by new snow. I think we'll need to pay these footprints some special attention. We're not an orphanage. All right, I'm just going to point out that uh, Mr. Thief, as it were, can't remove objects from the current land. So we're going to walk into a car, get run over by a taxi, walk into the wall of the big building, which wasn't that protruding from the orphanage or not. That's what I'm wondering. Got an investigation going on anyway. Lots of people to speak to. Blimey hell. How dare you, Scruffy? Don't you dare tell anybody. I'll just deny it anyway. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, you got to help me out, sir. What's the matter, Detective? It's about the SS5 incident. What else? I know Chairman Winner isn't in charge anymore and all, but the top secret file being available to us so quickly after its removal, something seemed off. So that got me to thinking. I put in a call and they told me that, um, well, that Miss Von Karma went to some pretty extreme lengths to get that file released. Curse you, Scrappy. I deny everything. Ah! It sounds like you went to a lot of trouble for our sake, Francisca. Don't worry, your efforts won't be for nothing. I'll solve this case. You'll see. By the sound of it, though, it would be highly illegal a route to take. I doubt you'd be taking an illegal route. Oh, can I read it? Wow, so much to read. We got... We got... 
all of that that we can see out of this. <laughs> Case overview. Occurred on February 10th, 12 years ago. President of Zheng Fa was kidnapped and ransomed for $100 million. President's presence at embassy until midnight confirmed by Delong Lang. Prosecutor in charge, Excelsius winner, suspect Fifi Lagarde. And we got this. Okay then, there must be more in there that we're not allowed to read, of course. Boy, howdy, is this ever a scoop? Whole oh, world's gone green. Must be an outbreak of something. I'm seeing green trees, green people, green clothes, everything. They must be real sick if even their clothes are green. Looks like we wound up slap bang in the middle of the right dang place at the right dang time. Sure did, Chief. I don't think we're going to get a word in edgewise here, Mr. Edgeworth. And I don't think we want to. Let's leave him to it. No, you're an actual talk. Ah, three planters covered with snow. Is it anything the matter, Agent Lang? Yeah, something's not right. I wasn't able to look at the case file until now. Indeed, you have Chairman Winner to thank for that. It seems. Yeah, but what's weird is, I've seen this scene somewhere before. What? But where? I keep thinking I've got it, but then... It's gone. He appears to be lost in his efforts to remember. Perhaps I should leave him alone for now. I mean, it sounds like I should leave him alone for now, then. Do you know what? I'll take Edgeworth's advice on that one, and I'll leave you, and I'll come back in a second. Shifu, I know it's rude of me to ask, but... Could we count off for old time's sake? Just once, I'm begging you! For old time's sake, seems a little sentimental, but fine. Count off! One! Hey, you're the only one here. S sorry, Shifu. It just doesn't feel the same on my own. It's kind of lonely. Fool, shouldn't matter if there's one of you or a hundred. You may be on your own here right now, but the pack is always with you. So quit whining about being lonely and howl like you mean it. Count off! One! One! One. One. Is he crying? <laughs> Is he crying? I don't know. Why are you doing, Fender? Looks chilly in your chilliest look out here, Malzarino. Somebody might have to warm me up. Could you maybe take this a little more seriously, Mr. Fender? For you, K Meister, anything. Can't believe this whole sorry tale began right here. Kind of crazy, right? Yes, it is a little. What were Fisa and the chairman up to, though? Where were they going with all of this? Where well, indeed, I'd very much like to know that myself. And I'd very much like to know when you two are going to admit how much you love your Uncle Eddie. <laughs> not anytime soon. Come on, Mr. Fender. You're not taking this seriously at all. He did for about three sentences, which is something of a record. I love you. <laughs> the race. Oh, so we could talk to you two. What do you want? I could ask you about the kidnapping. Sean, I wonder if you could tell us a little more about the circumstances surrounding your kidnapping. They took you when you went to the garbage disposal area, right? But what were you doing there? It's all right. You don't have to talk for him. You could just ask me himself. Hear that, Mr. Edgeworth? I think he's starting to warm to you. I went to the garbage disposal to throw away the flowers that were on that body. It wasn't far, and I figured they'd be less likely to find them there than if I threw them in a garbage can. I tried to get in there last night, too, but it was locked. So you had to come back today and try again. Yeah, but when I was there, somebody came up behind me and put something over my face. Oh, yeah, snoozing is easy freezy with freezies. The fact that she was drugged with it, too, doesn't seem to bother her. I guess it is a catchy name. Whoever it was was pretty strong, but I never saw their face. I see. Thank you, that's very helpful. What can you tell us about the time between when you were kidnapped and when you were found? Not a whole lot, I'll bet. Snoozing is easy freezy with freezies. I remember waking up feeling cold. I was somewhere big and empty and dark. But there were cardboard boxes with some other language written on them. I figured it must be a storeroom. But it was actually a giant refrigerator. Businesses use them to keep stuff chilled. And that's where Kay and Detective Gumshoe found him. They really saved the day there. Guess the cooler must have been on until just before I was brought there. Like I said, it was pretty cold. Anyway, they didn't take my phone for some reason. So I used that to call for help. I see. 
Well, we're all very glad that you found your way back to us safely. Ah, say it like you mean it, why don't you? Hm. He's not the most gracious child I've met. Reminds me of a certain somebody else. <laughs> and Gavel has chats too. Can I help you, Mr. Edgeworth? I cannot thank you all enough for returning Sean safely to me. I... I can hardly bear to imagine how I would have felt if he had not come home. Hey, old guy, can you see you're upsetting her? I... that was not my intent at all. <laughs> Look at our little knight in shining armor defending his mum's honor. Shut up, I... I wouldn't have to if you didn't keep. That's enough, Sean. Mr. Edgeworth... If you'll allow me, I would like to apologize again. I failed in my duty as a servant of justice. I will not ask you to forgive me. I only ask you to understand that... that I... Judge Gavell, I don't presume to know the goddess of justice as well as you do. But she was a mother, was she not? Of other gods and goddesses? She was. Their judgment requires personal circumstances to be taken into account. I'm sure she would understand. Perhaps your beloved goddess is more merciful than you give her credit for. But thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Hm. What are they even talking about? Don't worry, Sean. I don't have a clue either. So things are finally setting down after Warden Lagarde's trial. It would seem so. Sentencing is still to come, but the guilty verdict should stand. And do not worry, Excelsius Winner's connection to the case will be thoroughly investigated. Have faith, Mr. Edgeworth. Eustace is a changed man. Indeed, he simply has some growing to do. But then don't we all, Kay included? Huh, kind of feel for him now. I said some pretty mean things, but I'll make it up to him next time I get the chance. And I'm sure the chance will come. But for now... Indeed, we need to focus on the case at hand. It's always worrying to talk to people first before investigating, because you never know when the investigations might reveal something that you can then present when talking. It's a porch swing with an elephant's face on it, and behind it is what appears to be a motor. You know what every dedicated swing fiend always wonders, don't you? If they could swing all the way over the top and back again. Maybe a motorized swing could finally make that dream come true. Wouldn't that be a little dangerous? And what dream isn't it? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. True, but hardly applicable in this case. What else do I look at? The planter? These planters. According to the case file, the yard stretched around three sides of the orphanage. And there were three planters on each side. Yes, planters arranged in a very particular pattern. One we've seen somewhere before. Oh, okay, yeah. Shame there aren't many flowers, but I guess it was the middle of winter. Yes, but look at that one. It's bright yellow. Weird, how come there's only one? Wait, it looks like somebody dropped it. Is it a lion, Lily? That's a lion, Lily, if I'm not very much mistaken. A rare member of the family, Lily Seer. Lily Seer. A lion, Lily, would say. Just say that. It's easier. Not Latin. Wait, didn't Judge Gavell give President Wang some lion lilies? What is the same flower doing here? This can't be a coincidence, can it? I believe this particular cultivar is from Asia, where it's said to symbolize the bond between parent and child. I wasn't aware you were so knowledgeable when it came to flowers, Francisca. <laughs> what I just told you is common knowledge. Perhaps you just need to read a little more. I mean Latin. There are burn marks on this pillar here. The report says there was a fire sometime on the evening of the incident. A fire? Yeah, let's see. Where was it again? Ah. Yeah, one of the orphans set a fire with some kerosene. Some sort of prank, probably. They sound like a lively bunch. Possibly too lively. Seems their antics spoiled our chances of finding any footprints near the entrance of the building. Fire. One of the children set the orphanage yard on fire as a prank. It's just a prank, bruh. Also, those planters, by the way. The left planters fit the footsteps that we've seen, don't they? That's a thing to note. Hey, this arch. We've seen it somewhere before, right? Indeed we have. It's the same one that stands over the entrance of the big building today. 
But this is supposed to be how things looked 12 years ago. Was it there the whole time? It seems the architects worked the old archway into the structure of the new building. The future is simply the past reheated. I think I heard that somewhere. And for once, it seems you might have remembered it correctly. But 12 years is a long time to reheat something for. If it was your lunch, it'd be ruined. Unforgivable. An igloo shaped like a bear. The perfect balance of cuteness and scariness. I guess you could call it a bigloo. Hmm, it is quite large. You could probably fit as many as three people inside it. Yeah, and they can live in there for three whole years. Three years? And what about the summer? Wouldn't the big... Um, um, igloo melt? Again, again, say it again, Mr. Edgeworth, please, one more time. Wouldn't the igloo melt? Ah, you're no fun. The bigloo. A tortoise and a hare, inspired by the children's story, no doubt. <laughs> That's your voice now, Edgeworth. The tortoise races the speedy hare and wins. All right, time for a K Faraday pop-up pop quiz. Why did the hare lose the race? I'll give you three options. I don't need three options, Kay. He lost because he stopped to rest and fell asleep. Number one, the hare's favorite running shoes were stolen by the Atagalasu. Number two, the tortoise trained with the Atagalasu and got so fast that he won. Number three, the real winner was the Atagalasu who plotted a surprise secret victory. Those are my only three options. Too hard? All right, I'll give you a hint. The option you're looking for starts with a fr. Well, that definitely narrows it down. Ah, oh, the Atagalasu won the race. And now we know. This looks like a snowman, but it's mostly melted. Well, it's no wonder he's all slushy. He's wearing a hat and a scarf. He must have been all roasty toasty. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at his cute little bun eye just lying there. He probably would have frozen back up again at dawn, you know. That's when it's usually coldest. Heh <laughs> I don't think that would have helped much, Mr. Edgeworth. It's, if a metal snowman froze again, it wouldn't turn back into a snowman. It would turn into an iceman. Ah, what? It's what I bet you wanted me to say, isn't it? Well, too bad. Why would I be surprised? Yes, you're correct. A lot more footsteps leaving than... Okay, wait a second. It's two people gone from separate paths. <laughs> then one brick the other in the head. <laughs> So this is the tracks of the victim. These footprints stop by the body. I guess that means they belong to Mr. Alldown, right? His feet were pretty big. What's that? About size 12. To be honest, there seems like massive gaps in his shoes at the back. According to the file, they were the same size as his shoes. It's a match. These footprints go toward the body and come back. According to the case file, they're thought to be the killers. They're about size 9. Pretty average, in other words. It seems the police weren't able to track down who the murderer was from them, though. Alf Aldown, the man who witnessed the president's kidnapping. Well, what exactly did he see? Well, he had a camera there. I based this part of the recreation on one of the crime scene photos. It seems he suffered a blow to the back of the head. Yeah, from that brick right there. They figured it must have been taken from here in the yard. It looks like the blood flowed from the head wound and spread over the surrounding area. Was he kneeling or something? To be knocked in the back of the head? Considering the footsteps and all. He didn't come... The, the person didn't come from behind. So kneeling, looking down, something like that. Here, a gift for you. This is Mr. Aldown's autopsy report. The victim was struck on the head and died at around 1 a.m. on February 10th. Let's have a look at this. I must scour the scene and inspect anything that catches my attention. Well, the first thing first. Oh my god, we've got four pages now. Believed to have been murdered. He was 31. Believed to have been murdered during a call where he was detailing something he had witnessed. Time of death, February 10th at approximately 1 a.m. 12 years ago. Cause of death was loss of blood resulting from a blow to the back of the head with a brick. And of course, the picture. Alright, he's got a phone over here. And we've got the lion lily we already saw. Somebody's dropped a yellow flower here. It's a lion lily, right? According to Francisca, yes. They're originally from Asia, if I recall correctly. 
Yeah, and she said it symbolizes the pond being painted or tiled, right? It was the bond between parent and child, okay? I don't know how you go that far away, to be totally honest with you. You may be like, yes, the pond being painted or tiled. What do you mean? The inside? The outside? Over it? This cell phone must have belonged to the victim. You're right. Hmm. Yeah, it says here in the file that Mr. Uldown made a call while he was watching the kidnapping. A call? To whom? His girlfriend. Seems he called her when he saw that the president was there. But she didn't pick up, so he left a message. That's in here too, if you want to hear it. Please. Hey, Rosie. It's me. I guess you're asleep already. Anyway, I'm here at the orphanage. There's something weird's going on. President Wang is here for some reason, and there's another... Damn it, the light's out, so I can't quite see, but... It looked like he was being kidnapped? Anyway, probably nothing, but I thought I should let you... What were those sounds at the end? He must have been attacked while he was still on the phone. Agent Lang, can I ask you something? Mr. Aldown's girlfriend, what was her name? Ringer. Rosie Ringer. At least that's what I heard. Just as I thought. Wait. You mean... Her revenge for what happened 12 years ago. All Miss Ringer was left with were the memories and personal effects of her lover. And so, seeking revenge on Chairman Winner, she made her appearance at the auction. So she really was out for revenge on Chairman Winner, wasn't she? Perhaps it was for his suppression of the kidnapping. Or perhaps it was because she thought he was one of the kidnappers, the Kasu. Mr. Allown's final call data jotted down in my organizer. Well, that's a big link just from the phone itself. Let's look at the brick. This was the brick used in the murder. Found by Uldown's body, did it come from somewhere nearby? That stuff made of bricks all around the yard here. They probably took it from somewhere nearby, huh? But where? The camera, specifically? So the victim was carrying a camera. Oh yeah, according to the file, they recovered a picture. Uh, yeah, here we are. That's... It's the president, right? <laughs> and Gregory Edgeworth, no, no. <laughs> and somebody's pointing a gun at him. This guy always had, like, his... Snowman had, like, the eye clawed out of it. This must be what Mr. Aldown witnessed. So the person in the trench coat is the kidnapper. Yes, I imagine they were trying to conceal their identity. But if Agent Lang's father's theory was correct, the person wearing that trench coat is Warden Lagarde. How come they only found the one picture? He probably wasn't able to take any more before he was attacked. Only one picture was taken shows the president being kidnapped. I'm interested in the mystery of the snowman at this point. Alpha Uldown, freelance journalist. Killed after witnessing the kidnapping of President Wang. Even in the recreation, it's pretty gruesome, huh? It's even worse in the actual crime scene photos. That's a lot of blood. It seems mostly to have come from the back of his head, as you can see that area is completely caked. Yeah, the autopsy report says that where he was hit with the brick. Indeed, I imagine his attacker must have snuck up on him from behind. Hmm, it looks as if he's clutching something in his right hand. Oh yeah, they mentioned it in the file somewhere. Let's see. According to this, it was a button. A button. Torn from the attacker's clothing, perhaps. Found clutching all down's right hand, the blood is his. Okay. These shoes are too big. Ah, fresh blood. Plenty of it. According to the autopsy report, he died from loss of blood due to the blow to the back of his head. Yes, and that blood spread out over the entire area. I doubt anybody could have bled that much and survived. Anyway, this certainly seems to confirm what the autopsy report suggests. 
It is. The feet are a place of interest. Footprints were a key part of this case. There was information about the shoes in the file, correct? Yeah, let's see. There is size 12. Feet were clean. No corns, no athlete's foot. Beige socks, thermal underwear in the same color. He dressed old guy style. Brighter socks would have really made that outfit pop. Why not live a little? And that's it for the fashion rundown. Shout out to whoever left these amazing helpful comments. And here I thought it was going to be a plain old investigation report. Look, that's like so much gap between foot and shoe. It makes it look like someone somehow brought the body over here. After clawing, like getting knocked down, maybe grabbing the thing on the way down, the button off the snowman. And then they've replaced the shoes, and then everyone at the crime scene was like, Yes, those are the person's shoes, even though, look at that clearance, they'd have been flopping around and flopping off his foot, and it would have been incredibly uncomfortable to walk in them. If that is not a thing, then I'm just gonna have to protest that he's, he definitely needed better fit shoes in his life. Might have been able to run away or something, I don't know. Maybe not get clonked on the head? Shouldn't blame the victim, though. I don't know where I'm getting at with this, but still. Right, I guess it's time for logic before t -t -t talking. Quite possibly. We've got a fair bit of it. Oh, wait a second. We haven't talked to you yet. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I can't believe there used to be an orphanage right here on the spot. And that Warden Lagarde was in charge. And the SS5 incident took place there 12 years ago. Yeah, they kidnapped the president of Zeng Fa. That's crazy. And they killed Mr. Aldam, the only witness that we know of anyway. And kept all the details secret for all those years. The more I think about that, the more you smell something fishy going on. Yeah, me too. What's even weirder is the people involved. I think we know all of them, don't we? The guard, winner, President Wang. When I think back over all the cases we've been involved with recently, it's true. I can't help but think they're all connected. Then we have to dig into this latest mystery and snatch the treasure of truth from inside of it. I'll keep updating the simulation as we find new stuff. Just be sure to look over everything super carefully, okay? So we're calling on Mr. Thief's help once again. Hmm. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth. It's Little Thief, and no matter how useful Little Thief is, if the information we plug in is wrong, the simulation will be wrong too. If you spot anything that doesn't make sense, try comparing it to the evidence we've collected. And we can examine and interact with everything in the simulation, as if it were really there, correct? Right, just walk up to it and do what you usually do. Also, we don't have enough to go on right now, but if you can gather enough intel, I can even create a simulation of a different span of time. All right, I'm counting on you should the time come. Right, the time should now come. How much logic have we got? Not much. Right, we got three footprints and three planters. They were done in the same kind of fashion. The left side of the planters is definitely what those are, so they've got to be linked together. So that's what our monstrous hoof prints really were. Wait, what? Recall the arrangement of the prints. Now compare it to that of the planters. Whoa! That's right. I believe the footprints are located exactly where our planters once stood. So Chairman Winner was digging around the front of them. He was, and why might he have been doing that? We have a piece of evidence in our possession that answers exactly that question. Which piece of evidence shows why Chairman Winner might have been digging in front of the planters? It's the bit we presented not too long ago, by the look of it. The bit that mentions a package we laid to rest 12 years ago in front of the planters. Take that! Recall, if you will, the report that Warden Lagarde sent to Chairman Winner. In it, she mentioned something that had been laid to rest in front of a planter. You think she was telling him where to dig? Wait, but why three holes? Because the report didn't specify which of the planters she meant. I get it, so he wasn't sure which one it was. Which meant he had to try and dig up all three. I imagine so, yes. Poor Chairman Winner. But why go to all that trouble? What was he looking for? The guard asked him to dig something up near a planter, but what? I think that's about all we can learn from the scene for now. 
All right, how about I try to show you how things looked earlier on that night? That would be very much appreciated. Could you take us back to the moment at which the victim witnessed the kidnapping? Sure, I'll use the photograph he took. Here goes nothing. Of course, that should only change this at the front and nothing about over there because that would be unknown. So let's see if that's true. No. <laughs> but I guess that makes sense. There's Mr. All Down in the middle of the planters. All Down before the fall down. And there's the president and his kidnapper out by the road. My father based his investigation on the evidence All Down provided. That was why he thought the kidnapping and the orphanage were connected somehow. And how he wound up suspecting Fifi Lagarde. She was the one running the orphanage at the time. Exactly. But when the case went to trial, Excelsius Winner put a big hole in that theory. He did. Yeah, but after all, the president and the kidnapper weren't actually on the grounds of the orphanage. So it was hard to conclusively prove any kind of connection. Ah, huh, so they were never seen inside the gates of the orphanage. Ah, Detective Buster got to find evidence on the scene, and then prosecutors come along and twist it for their own ends. Winner and Lagarde were working together. He has some kind of deal, I'm sure of it. So you're saying that Chairman Winner was working with the kidnapper? Got Lagarde acquitted of the kidnapping, were they accomplices? Your father was convinced that Lagarde was the culprit, correct? And you say he was a gifted and thorough investigator. Then he must have had more to support his theory than just Mr. Aldown's message, surely. Yeah, he must have. Just don't know what it was. It wasn't exactly a case he liked talking about. Agent Lang's father, Da Long Lang. Trusted ally and confidant to President Wang. He discovered truths that were subsequently suppressed by Chairman Winner. Our first priority should be to find out what they were. So we now have the incident at 1.15 a.m. Just before. A bit more to discover. A bit more logic to maybe claim. In fact, everything can be re-examined again that is examinable. I don't know if that would give me different dialogue or the same dialogue or what. Why not try and find out again? There are burn marks on this pillar here. The report says there was a fire on top of the evening of the incident. So this looks like the exact same dialogue. So it looks like everything's pretty much the same. I don't see anything that's actually changed apart from what we've seen elsewhere. Even says about the footprints again. So all the other implements must be the same, except for, of course, the snowman and the footprints. And, of course, the bodies that we see in action. But that brings another episode of Ace Attorney Investigations to Prosecutor's Gambit to an end. We have another bit of the scene to investigate, more logic to maybe claim, more people to speak to. We didn't even actually speak to you in the end, which means we must have skipped over your dialogue, though it said to do it later. I don't know which. Maybe we should talk to you at the start of next episode. I don't know. We'll find out next time. Until then, I say... Bye-bye.